Hey there, it's Yudna. I'm making some triggers today here in the machine shop, so I wanted to make a really brief video to show the process. Because it's been a long time since I've uh, shown a uh, trigger manufacturing, even though we do a lot of these parts. Uh, so you can see the final product right there. That's a Axe Pro single trigger with the bearings and set screws all installed and ready to be used. Uh, so here's what we do to make them. We start with a block material that looks like this. And then we put it in the vise and I machine side one, uh, which includes all of the profile and the filleted edge and the bearing pocket right there. Uh, and then when that's done, flip it around out of the vise. And I put it in the special soft jaws that you can see right here, which uh, even though I call these soft jaws, this is actually a, an alloy steel, uh, so it doesn't deform. Uh, it's not soft steel but it's not hardened so we use these for making parts like the trigger that has a really weird curved edge and allows the vise to grab it so I'm gonna blow this off so you can see now the vise jaws are perfectly clean and ready to be used I don't want to have any chips in there because they get lodged and scratched apart so I'm gonna take the half finished side put it in and the raw material goes right here. And we tighten it down. All right, here we go. So that's just a nice smooth side on the outside of the trigger. I use that to reference everything else. So when this finishes, it'll have the uh, outside shape of the trigger completely done, which is uh, probably most of the machine time just goes into that. But you can see it doesn't take long to, to do all the roughing. Uh, it's going to be done right here. So there's the outside shape. Like I said, it's completely roughed out, uh, but it's not finished yet. We got this drill right here. This is gonna drill the pilot hole for the trigger bearing. I need to have coolant for this, so sorry about that. Uh, this step is the wall finish which has to have coolant for some of it, but not all of it. Uh, let me see if I can do this correctly. Okay, so now the triggers are basically finished except there's one thing left, which is, if I focus on it, it's the little uh, edge radius that goes on the outside. As you can see the outside right now looks pretty sharp. So we'll fix that. Next feature. Just clean up. And 
And then the engraving is last. Should say. So right now it's engraving uh, the new Mac logo, uh, but the side one is completely finished. Uh, just did the uh, little chamfering deburring operation that helps it to make it easier to press in the bearings. Uh, and at this point I flipped it over and put it over here and pinched it in the jaws. And so now I'm just going to uh, remove what we call the skeleton and that's that little piece of material there that's holding everything together. Uh, we have to use a small tool for this because the tool, if we use a, a tool that's too large, then it'll put too much pressure on the part. So this is cutting away the outside area just to speed things up. The tool can take a little bit of cutting without coolant, but it's it's going uh, really high spindle speed, so I can't can't leave it running forever. You probably saw there was a little bit of like smoke coming off of it. That wasn't smoke, but it was actually uh, the coolant like vaporizing. So the tool is getting pretty hot. But as soon as this gets done, it'll be completely faced off to its finished thickness and ready for the final uh, deburring operation that has to happen. Oh, here we go. So there it is, basically done, but again, I have to use this little tool to create the filleted edge, make it comfortable. And then the final thing is another deburring, but that's it. Uh, the majority of the work is now done. The only thing left is I have to take the trigger and put it in a special fixture that will drill the set screw holes that are in the back and then the top. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to get through all the rest of these and then we'll do the rotary stuff. But you can see uh, it's a pretty quick process and it works out pretty nicely. Alright, so I'll uh, set up the rest of the machine and get back to you. Hey, just a quick interjection about the trigger fixtures. Uh, this is one that we used to use in the past for a different design where we had a couple pinholes that were in the trigger and we used a little tiny cap screw to bolt it down onto this plate. And then we cut all the way around it to get rid of the excess material. Uh, so that was kind of, a, kind of a prototyping process where we didn't have very many of them we were making. So this worked really good because all we had to do was take this chunk of metal and drill and tap the holes and then make the little relief in there. And it worked, worked really nice, like I said. Um, but it's a little bit slower to have to deal with this, and it's also a little bit less reliable. So the method I just carried you through with the alloy steel jaws is easier for throughput because it just takes a, you know, a couple seconds to loosen the vise, get the trigger out, put the next one in, clamp it down. You know, you're in and you're out in like 15 seconds maybe, uh, which is an easy thing to do. So it's really just a question of how much upfront time do you want to spend having to build this versus building this and you know whether or not it's valuable. But let me splice this into the video and get back to it. Alright so now um, a couple hours later I have the fourth axis installed and I've been finishing these triggers up. 
What you see right here is the final process for these triggers. So these ones are all done, completely ready to be removed out of the machine. Uh, obviously we do them in packs of three, as you can see. So this is one of the triggers as it comes out of the last process that you just saw, where the outside is basically finished. Uh, the only thing left is to uh, basically create the outside holes on the top and the back and whatever. Uh, so what we do is we put them here inside this mandrel, and what this does is it rotates them uh, in and out to access the holes on the top, and then tips it that way to access the holes on the back, and then it's completely done, ready to be used. So this is uh, our quick way of doing it uh, in batches of three without having to interact with the workpiece much, uh, but it's pretty easy. In the past, I, I grabbed one of these, this is one of our uh, soft jaws from something else, in the past, I would make some jaws like that that hold the trigger up to do the uh, back features and then put them in like that and do the top features. And that works pretty good, but this method is a little bit easier because it allows us to uh, create the triggers in, first of all, batches of three and you don't have to take them out halfway through. I'm trying to do this with one hand. There we go. So they sit in like that, and then I have to clamp this little piece of metal on the outside, which I can do right now. And I tighten it down, and then that's it. So again, I'm going to try to go through the process as much as possible uh, without coolant so you can see everything. Uh, I don't know if that'll happen or not, but we'll give it a try. So here we go. So this is creating a spot drill divot for all the holes on the outside. And then it's going to flip like that. And now we're doing the holes on the back. And then when this gets finished, we'll do the actual drilling right now. So this hole in the back is just to make it a little bit lighter. It doesn't actually do anything. Or sorry, that was the top. This is the back. And again, that's uh, just a hole to make it lighter, but it'll actually be used as a plunge hole for a slot. This is the magnet hole. That's for the little magnet to sit. This is the hole for the set screws. With some obnoxious movements that are added in for no reason. Drill out the bottom of the magnet hole to allow the magnet to get pressed out in case you want to reanodize the trigger. Then that's the final set screw hole in the back. And so when this is done, the drill is going to get checked to make sure it didn't break during the process. And as soon as that's ready to go, final operation. Final operation is this really, really, really small thread mill, which we use to create the threads of the holes. Unfortunately, I have to do coolant with this. So the thread mill goes in and it pops out the hole and allows this to be much more accurate than a tap. So you can see down to the top and the back. So it works pretty good. So this, this is going to take a little bit of time, so I guess I can show you the finished piece on a marker. So there's the finished piece on a marker. This is one of our new Numac bodies for the X-Pro. And the single trigger along with the single trigger guard, which is a drop-in part. You can see the magnet right there at the end of my thumb, the magnet. Uh, fits in perfect with the frame magnet. 
And this turned out really good. I, I love the way this thing feels. The trigger itself is a little bit larger than, uh, than it would be on a normal single trigger marker, but that's just because I had to make a room down at the very bottom for that magnet to fit. But it works pretty good and it's got a lot of, let me lean this up against there, it's got a lot of room for, uh, for some just good old fashioned single trigger action and I'm a big fan of it. Uh, we're gonna make a, a X-Pro body that matches the tactical style a little bit better, but I'm not done with it yet. Uh, so I guess I'll make a, some announcements later when that happens. But uh, all in all, it turned out really good and I like it. Okay, so the thread mill just finished, so all those holes are now tapped. Should be completely tapped. Uh, so now the very last thing is just a, I'm use a tool to make a little slot in the back that makes it a little bit lighter. Not very exciting, but it's better than nothing. So that's it, completely done. And it gets presented so I can load the next ones in. Uh, it occurred to me while I was talking about the gun, the reason we don't do rigid tapping on these is because the, the uh, thread mill pr puts less force on the part. Uh, I don't wanna risk having the triggers come popping out just because they're getting pushed on by the tap. So we use the thread mill which puts very, very, very little force on the outside of the workpiece and there's almost no chance of it actually popping out from that. Uh, but basically these are completely done, so that's about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish the rest of these, and then once that happens they'll be uh, sent through our dusting process and then off to anodizing, and then they'll be available. So look for them soon. I don't think I can do this again with <laughs> one hand. But, uh, but anyway, if you have any questions on uh, our trigger process, then let me know. Uh, like I said, we have a couple different methods that we've gone through over the years, and some things work better for others. But uh, this is what we do now, and it works pretty good. So uh, I guess that's it. Thanks. Have fun. Bye.